How's it going everybody? This is Always back with another video on the channel. Today we're going to be learning Source Tree. It's a free Git client for Windows and a Mac. So basically Source Tree simplifies how you interact with your Git repositories. So Source Tree support Mercurial and also Git. Nobody uses Mercurial anymore, but uh, this was there in history, but Source Tree is still supporting it. So now if you go to source tree app.com file here, you can come to this page and here you have a two versions available. Unfortunately, it's not available for Linux. It can only be downloaded for Mac or Windows. So here I'm going to download this by clicking here and then click on agree and then click on download. But I've already installed that source tree and downloaded. So here it is when you start the source the first time you might have to log into your atlassian account basically atlassian is the company who created source tree so you gotta have to have an account now the same account can be used if you have a bitbucket so bitbucket is here i've got three repositories i can use this account to log into source tree as well well if you're not sure about bitbucket bitbucket is uh is a service where you can uh, create your repositories for free and that can be private as well and also you can share your repositories with other people up to five uh, five people so let's get started with the source tree I'm gonna go and open source tree and here I will see a few options for let's click on this new button when you click on that you get this drop down which has a few options uh, clone from URL create remote repository add existing local repository create local repository scan directory a new repository group so we go through all these options so for example you have a github account and you want to clone the repository from that link you can do that by clicking on this clone from url and you get this model where you can type your uh, url for the repository you can define where you want to store the repository by clicking on this three dot button you can name your repositories as well so let's just say if I go to my GitHub account, you can see that I have a bunch of repositories here. Now on my GitHub account, I have some repositories. So let's say I want to clone this repository called chat app. So I click on that and I click on clone or download. I get this URL. I'm going to copy this URL and we're going to go back to source tree. And I'm going to paste the URL here. Okay, once I paste the URL, it tells me if it's a Git repository or not. So you can clone the repository. But also, you can create a new repository on a remote, which means whatever the account you use to sign in, it will go and create a repository on that account. And you can even type uh, your repository. It has Git and Mercurial. So you can do that as well. Now we're gonna go and add a local repository. So I click on add existing local repository. I'm gonna go and just get my repository here. Let's get open it. Now, once you have the repository here, you will double click on that to open the repository and you get to this, uh, this window now. So here you can see all my commits for that repository. If there is any uncommitted changes, I can click on that and uh, down below, I will see those commits. So it says, okay, I have changed something in this file, changed something in this file, and all of these files are changed are here. They are not committed yet. All right, so here are a few options we have in the workspace. You have a file history, whatever you changed. You have a history, which basically gives you the whole of your commits from, your, uh, from the start of your repository. You can search for any commit here so if i search for for example uh login and i will see okay these are the commits that has this login words as you can see this has a login word this is login word this is login login and also login so it's great for searching as well also you can search via your commit uh id now next uh, next section we have is a branches section. So here we can see we have only one branch master. So let me show you how you can create a branch. But to create a branch, we need to get rid of these uncommitted changes. So what I'll do, I'll commit them first and I'll create a new branch from our master branch. So here I will say, okay, I've got something here. I'm going to click on this commit button 
and then I have to type the message here where I'll say stable Firebase template for Ionic 4 app. All right, when I click on commit and it's going to commit, those changes also have this uh, few changes here where I see what's going on here. Let's not worry about it, so we can just you know ignore them. So I'll just click on ignore exact file name. I'll click on ignore that as well. Okay. And they're, they're basically gone now, so they won't really uh, interrupt you anymore. Okay, so now you can see I don't have anything to commit. So now I have one, this badge appeared on my push button where it says, okay, you have committed something, but you have not pushed that to your uh, remote server. So I click on push, and here there's a branch, and I'm going to click on OK. And it's going to push those changes to the server. So this is how you can commit and push from a server. Now, if you go, if you're working with your team member, and let's just say that he has some sort of commits, and you want to get that code from a server. So here you will see a pull button. I'll click on the pull button. It'll show me. Okay, you want to pull from your remote. So click on pull. It'll show you outputs if there's anything to output or not it will pretty much show you what branch that you use to pull all right so we have something called fetch fetch is something that if you have the multiple branches you want to get all the code from different branches downloaded then you can use fetch now let's go and create a branch using uh using source tree i'll click on the branch and i will name the branch as uh production okay now I'll have to specify the commit or I can choose working copy parent. I'll specify the commit, I'll click on pick and I'll just choose, I want to create a branch from something like here. I'll say template stable and let's just say click OK and I'll say create branch. Now here I've created a branch and my branch is pretty much on the top of this production branch. So here we have a production branch. Now let's go and do uh, check out this branch and just make some changes to the code. So I'll open VS Code and I'll open that project. All right, and I'm going to go and change something in a login page. I'll just add uh, a commit here. So I'll just say this dot uh, auth service dot current user, and I'll just you know do a console log here. All right. Let me just do some changes. It's not going to work, but let's just do a simple console log. So I'll just do hello YouTube. I'll save this. Let's go back to source tree. And now you will see I have some sort of uncommitted changes. And this is what I changed, right? So I'll just click on commit again. I'll say test commit. Click on commit here. And now I can just push this code there as well. So I'm going to click on this production, click OK, and it's going to push that to the server. I hosted this repository on Bitbucket, so I'll see that there. OK, so there you go, guys. So you have a tree-like uh, visual GUI for Git as well in source tree, where you can see which branch is, is where, and what's the top branch, what's the middle branch, what's happening on which branch. So this is great. So here you have something called remote section where you will see all the remote branches on your server. So I have two branches, master and production branch. Now stashes is something that you have something uh, which is uncommitted. They will see them here. That's the stashes. Now I don't want to go deep into uh, Git specific things, but pretty much anything you require to do in a Git will be available in source tree. One of the things I want to mention here is you have something called Git flow. So if I click on repository, I'll have this Git flow where I can say, hey, I want to add the Git flow workflow into this repository. So I can click here and it will initialize this with the git flow workflow, so where I'll have a production branch to be master, development branch to be developed, and all the feature branch that I can create will go into feature, release, and hotfixes will go into hotfixes. 
So this is a great tool. It's very stable, doesn't break, you know, uh, and I've used it for a long time. And I can see that a lot of people are having trouble using terminal git. So they can use this git, which you don't really need to remember any commands. All right, guys, so that was it for this quick video about Source Tree. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And also do some tricks and tips for the Source Tree in the later videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.